projeleriyle cama hayat veren değerli misafirlerimiz ve geleceği inşa edecek olan sevgili gençler. Her yıl düzenlediğimiz ve geleneksel hale getirdiğimiz T buluşmalarında sizlerle birlikte olmak çok büyük bir mutluluk. Bugün dördüncüsünü düzenlediğimiz T buluşmalarında dünyanın en inovatif ve yenilikçi mimarlarından biri Ma Yenson ile birlikteyiz. Bu birliktelikteki amacımız hem çok değerli misafirimizden hem de Türkiye'deki mimarların ve cam sektörünün gücünden hep birlikte ilham almak. Mimarlık, insanlık tarihinin en eski mesleklerinden biri. Hayatımıza anlam katıyor, artık malzemenin sınırlarını da zorluyor. Biz de şişe cam, düz cam olarak camın sınırlarını zorluyoruz. Bugün Avrupa'nın en büyük düz cam üreticisi olarak cam ile mucizeler yaratmak için var gücümüzle çalışıyoruz. Bugün şişe cam, düz cam olarak 10 ülkede 17 üretim tesisimizle Hindistan'dan İtalya'ya, Rusya'dan Mısır'a kadar farklı coğrafyalarda üretim yapıyoruz ve yenilikçi ürünlerimizi tüm dünyaya sunuyoruz. Şeffaflığıyla bizi her ortamda doğal gün ışığıyla birleş, buluşturan cama, etkin enerji tasarrufu sağlama, emniyet ve güvenlik ihtiyacımıza çözümler üretme ve gürültüyü kontrol etme özelliği kazandırarak mucizevi ürünler yaratıyoruz. Küresel ısınmaya en etkili çözümlerden biri, Enerji tasarrufu sağlayan camlar, bunları üretmekle yetinmiyoruz. Sürdürülebilir gelecek için daha fazla ne yapabiliriz diye bu sorunun cevabını Şişe Cam Bilim ve Teknoloji Merkezimizde arıyoruz. Bilim ve Teknoloji Merkezimizde yenilikçi ürünlerimizi her geçen gün daha büyük şevk ve heyecanla geliştiriyoruz. Projelerin farklı ihtiyaçlarına çözümler sunan temperlenebilir kaplamalı camlarda hiç durmadan yeni ürünler geliştirdik ve bugün 36 çeşit ürüne ulaşmış durumdayız. Ben de buradan size en yeni ürünümüz temperlenebilir solar lovi cam 6028'in müjdesini vermek istiyorum. Bu ürünümüz gerçekten en yeni teknolojiyle en gelişmiş teknolojiyle üretilmiş ve çok yüksek seçiciliğe sahip bir ürün. Yine bu sene 2018 yılında bu ürünümüze ilave olarak temperlenebilir solar lovi cam nötral 7037, 5128, 5027, derin mavi 4028 ve yine temperlenebilir boyalı camımızı geliştirdik. Ve daha da genişleyen ürün gamımızla projelerinizin her türlü ihtiyacına Çözümler sunuyoruz. Bugün şişe cam, düz cam olarak doğru camın doğru yerde kullanılması bizim için çok önemli. Bunu sağlamak için de proje bazında sizlere deneyimli, güçlü ve uzman ekibimizle cam danışmanlığı ve teknik destek sunuyoruz. Yanınızda olmadığımız zamanlar için de sizlere 6 dilde 17 mobil uygulama geliştirdik. En hızlı şekilde cam danışmanlığı ve teknik destek verebilmek için aslında bu mobil uygulamalarımızla cam seçimi konusunda her an yanı başınızdayız. Camın kalbi olarak nitelendirdiğimiz Tuzla'daki Şişe Cam Genel Merkezimizde çok güzel bir showroomumuz var. Bu showroomumuzda sizi camın büyülü dünyasında yolculuğa çıkarıyoruz. Hepinizi ben bu showroom'a bekliyorum. Özellikle camlarımızın sağladığı faydaları size bu showroom'da deneyimleterek gösteriyoruz. Ve projeleriniz için en uygun camı hep birlikte seçiyoruz. Hepimiz biliyoruz, projelerin her biri çok özel ve her projenin bir hikayesi var. Ben de şimdi sizlere birkaç referans Projemizin yer aldığı filmimizle baş başa bırakmak istiyorum ve ardından sözü çok değerli misafirimize bırakıyorum.
Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Um, <clears throat> where's my slides? Um, today I'm going to talk about some work we are working on and also introduce you uh, my uh, philosophy um, behind those projects. The title of my speech uh, is uh, uh, Mad, Mad Building Architect, Building Nature. Uh, so we are architects, we often build artificial things. And uh, nature, uh, we often think nature is uh, um, something against, on the opposite side of artificial things. But I would like to put uh, these two together. Uh, what if we are building something artificial, but uh, inspired from the nature? So that's, that was the idea. This image shows uh, artificial cities, architecture, and uh, at the same time, the nature. The nature, uh, we, we often think, um, you know, it's very different from the man-made man world. We, we often build uh, uh, buildings using technology, and nature is, uh, is uh, something always been there for uh, uh, millions of years already. Um, but what I think is that in the modern cities, um, nature is missing. And then I want to show you one picture. I, I, I did this picture um, in year 2006. Uh, that was a proposal for um, um, a, a Tiananmen Square in, in Beijing, in China. The, the Tiananmen Square was a very political uh, space. It's a, it's a big square, uh, no trees, no single trees. So my proposal was uh, planting all the trees to cover this plaza and turn this plaza into a, for, a forest. This image, I, I, I call Beijing 2050 because I thought it's, a, um, it's very hard to, to make it happen. Um, actually, it's not, not difficult to just planting trees, but what was difficult um, was uh, uh, turn a political space into a new space which is more natural and human. Um, I, think, I think if this space can change, then many architecture uh, concept will change. The space, the urban space, the, uh, the urban architecture will be more about humanity and, uh, and the nature. Uh, talking about the nature, I think uh, <clears throat> I have a quite a different understanding uh, because um, I grew up from uh, traditional buildings um, in Beijing. And uh, when I go to the West, for example, in Europe, the gardens look very different. Um, uh, that was a, a French garden. And the picture on the right is a Chinese garden. You can see the difference. Uh, Chinese garden is a more um, about the combination. Uh, building and trees and the rock and the water, everything has to combine together to create the whole experience. So the architecture is a not standalone object. And, and the, every natural element has to have a cultural meaning behind it. So for example, um, one person could uh, write a poem about this uh, tree and the tree will die. And uh, after the tree die, people will think uh, it's, this is a story linked to, to, to his life. So the physical world will have a spiritual meaning um, uh, to the people. Um, same as a city. When, when you observe the city, uh, for example, in this two Google map, you see uh, Manhattan, New York, the Central Park. The Central Park is a nature, right? You have a trees, you have a beautiful park. Um, but it's, you can see the very hard boundary between the, this nature and the artificial city. Because uh, in the West, people think um, 
okay, we are we are man-made. We preserve the nature, or we uh, we take resource from the nature. But in the east, this is Beijing city. Uh, Beijing, you can see that uh, there's a lake, uh, there's island, there's a bridge, there's a mountain in the city center, but they're kind of mixed with artificial things. Uh, in fact, all these mountains and the lake, they were ar ar already artificial, those landscapes. They, they were not uh, wild nature. So my concept was in the um, west and the east, we have a very different understanding about the nature. Um, and the modern cities we're living in right now is more like a developed from the Western concept. But how this uh, philosophy uh, that human and nature can coexist uh, could develop into a new concept, that, that's, a, I think, a, a question. So that's uh, the modern city concept. That was uh, from Le Corbusier talking about modern architecture. Uh, they are very functional, and they, that was a proposal for Paris, uh, uh, but it uh, didn't happen. Um, but but uh, uh, Le Corbusier says um, uh, buildings, they're machines for living. Uh, but now, uh, I don't think it's a, it's a um, good definition for architecture. Architecture should uh, have m much more meaning uh, than function, uh, functional machines, I think. Um, Paris didn't take that proposal, but uh, if you see this image, that's uh, actually two photos uh, combined together. One is uh, uh, Manhattan, New York, another one is a, a, a city in China. And we're building many cities, a new city, not only in China, in many developing places. Um, we're building this uh, so-called modern image. We've tried to uh, learn from the, uh, the modern uh, typology, which is a uh, lot of high-rise buildings, and uh, e each one take a site, and they try to compete uh, to create uh, taller buildings. But there's nothing to do with um, uh, nature. Um, and this concept is still continuing in many new developments. I, I find this also a funny picture. Um, the, the one on the left is actually a, a landmark building in London. Uh, it's called the Shard Building, Shard Tower. Um, the one on the right is a, a tower from um, North Korea. It's a hotel. The project stopped so long. Uh, originally, they want to compete with uh, uh, uh, Empire State Building in New York. They want to make a taller building, but uh, unfortunately, uh, the project stopped uh, for so long. But now they completed. It's funny; two buildings look uh, very similar. They all having this uh, uh, very sharp uh, uh, point. The, uh, pointing the sky. It remind me the, the, the cathedrals, the, the churches in the old city. Uh, in, in, the, in the old traditional towns, western towns, you have these uh, churches. They're, they're the most uh, landmark buildings. But now I think these two buildings uh, somehow shows um, they all also landmark, but they're showing the capitalism and power. I think that's, uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, being the destiny for, for modern architecture like this. This is a very similar project uh, in Paris. Uh, of course, Le Corbusier didn't build uh, his uh, towers, but this tower happened. That, that's the only high-rise building in, the, in, in central Paris, this black, black building. It's called the Tower Montparnasse, and uh, uh, Paris people call this uh, scarf of, of Paris. They, they don't like this building, but somehow they like, they, they like Eiffel Tower. Right? Eiffel Tower become landmark, uh, uh, but originally, the, the, originally the, the, uh, the Eiffel Tower was 
was earlier, was built earlier, was built during a, um, a expo to show off that you know they have they can build they can use the steel uh, as a new material um, to to to build this uh, tall structure, and then the competition to use steel to building tall buildings become. Uh, very uh, the, the the main the main competition. So that's why they built this one, and now they they want to they launch the competition to change this one. They say, how can we make this tower more beautiful? So we were part of this competition. Uh, <clears throat> that's why we have to think about the uh, how how how to deal with it. One day uh, that's that that's a picture from Beijing. We have this uh, pollution. So so one day I see this. Uh, uh, everything kind of uh, disappeared uh, in in in this uh, in, in the air. So I was thinking maybe uh, we I want to I want to make uh, the tower disappear, the black tower uh, disappear from the from the Paris. So so that's that was my proposal. I tried to use a glass <laughs> uh, to use a reflection to make the tower kind of a. Um, blend into the, the background. So it's not black anymore. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's all about uh, uh, the surrounding, how the surrounding reflect into the tower. In this case, I decide to make the, the reflection upside down. So what, what you see is a, a floating city upside down hanging in, in the sky. And uh, from this angle, you will see Eiffel Tower also. Uh, reflected into the building, but ups upside down, and we lost the competition. Um, at the at the first at the first <laughs> uh, meeting, they uh, they were so uh, excited, um, uh, but they they asked why you, why you make Eiffel Tower upside down. I said you already have one, the real one, and I think uh, you, you don't want the two same uh, ones. But I, my true answer was. Uh, uh, why we are trying to change this building? Why we don't like this tall building? Uh, why don't we continuing build build this kind of a tall buildings in the historical center? Um, this question, if we want to answer this question, we have to go back to to Eiffel Tower, because tall structure um, from that day, from the first day. They already become a memorial. They they show they showing this strength. They showing uh, the tall building can be memorial for for capitalism and, and power. Um, so that's why every city they trying to build the taller and taller buildings, and to try to compete. I think if we can um, go back and look at the Eiffel Tower from a new angle, from different angle. Which is necessary for us to understand uh, this, this issue, and uh, <clears throat> that's an uh, image I produced when I was a student. <laughs> that was when I was in college. That was uh, uh, in year um, 1999, uh, maybe 2000. That was uh, the year after 9/11 uh, happened uh, in New York. And everyone, uh, all the designers, they try to propose for the new World Trade Center in New York because the Twin Tower collapsed. That was my proposal. I, I, I made uh, this uh, floating um, building, like a cloud. Uh, on top of it, I, I, I made a park. And it's a floating. Um, it's horizontal structure, and it's organic. And now, I, when I look back, I, I thought the idea uh, for me, for a young student, probably uh, was uh, not a competition, right? Not to, to build a, a stronger memorial, not to to try to um, make a new competition. But my idea was to release, to relief, to find a freedom um, um, in this site. How to achieve this freedom? I think nature was my was my key. So the sky and the park uh, on top of the structure. After I graduate, I start my office, and that was the first competition we won. Um, two towers in Canada, 
and people called the first tower we went uh, Marilyn Monroe Building because the curvature. Um, I like the name. I think I think um, because uh, people rarely call a high-rise building a reference uh, the uh, a high rise building after a woman because uh, most of the high rise buildings look very strong, uh, very serious. Uh, so the, so the, the nature uh, for me was important in this project. I tried to create a balcony, open uh, facade, a lot of uh, uh, transparency. Um, um, also, you, when you put these two buildings together, uh, they're like a sisters. Uh, they, they they are slightly different, and you can you can kind of create this uh, um, because they're different. So that the space in between them can be uh, always changing. So two towers feels like a dancing together. So that was my my um, uh, thinking. Uh, I think in the in the ancient cities. Um, a lot of a structure, a lot of architecture. They were about religion. Modern cities, they were um, um, talking about capitalism and, and power. What, what's about the future? The future, I think, we should talk more about human and the nature. Um, so I want to use several examples to show what's my understanding about humanity and nature. Uh, when I talk about nature, it's not about uh, trees or green or not even sustainability. I I'm talking about um, um, emotional nature, like how you feel about the nature. This building was a, um, a kindergarten I built in Japan. Uh, you can see that this is a concept. There is an old house inside a new house. The, the wood frame is, um, is, a, is a, the, the structure, existing structure from, from old building. So we, we build a bigger, build, bigger envelope outside the, the old structure. Why are we doing that? That was an old building. Because the old building, they have a very small building, but uh, it, it's a home for this family. And the son, the son of the family says, oh, I want to demolish this building and build a new, a bigger a building for, for community as a kindergarten. He has ambition. And then his father against it. His father says, I live here forever. I don't want to uh, change. Uh, so that was, uh, uh, that was uh, my solution. I want to keep part of the old building as uh, part of the new building so the, the, the new space will have some memory of, of the old structure. Um, so in this case, uh, the nature for me means the earth. The earth is what architecture rooted uh, from. It's rooted into the place where the families, the emotion, um, the memories um, uh, around the project. That's the ceremony they had in Japan. Uh, that was a really moving moment. Every people uh, around the project, they, they, they go there. And, uh, and the kids. So, so that, that was a very important to me as a designer. I understand architecture cannot stand alone. It has to, part of, has to be part of uh, uh, people's life. That was my uh, building after finish. It looks so different, right? People always always say, oh, you, you, you do um, different architecture. They look uh, um, uh, different color, different shape uh, from traditional buildings. But, uh, but inside this building, you, you have a, a part of the old memory. It's actually uh, the new building, the three floor. And from the second floor, there's a um, slide coming down. And this is the entrance for this building. It's like a cave. Right? It's a, it, it brings people, uh, the, the young kids, go into a different space from the reality. So I, I think it's a very, very soft. The building can be, feels like a tent. 
That's a plan. You can see that's a, uh, the core of the building is uh, actually uh, where the old, old building was. That's a, that's a wood frame from the old uh, structure. Um, by doing this, we, of course, we save some money, but, the same, but it's not the, the, the most important thing because, because um, for me, what's, what's important was to, to keep some memory. Uh, the old building become the, the part of the new structure, and uh, those wood, they're, they're actually not uh, so ex not expensive wood. They're not like uh, really old uh, temples or, or something. It, it, it's just because the memory they have. It's a, it's a very normal things, but, but there, there are people live around them um, for, for a long time. So I, I decided to, to keep those. And this is space, the new space, um, on top of the, the old sloping roof. Now, now it's become the third level of the new space. It's a, it's a classroom. And that's a corner, can, the only, very, very low, only um, young kids can go there. Uh, they have a window to, to look outside. <coughs> so that's a, <coughs> so you don't see trees in that, in that, uh, in that building. This is also, this is an, another project also ca uh, talking about Earth. It's a very different scale. This is a, this is a, a sports center we're building in China. Uh, there is a stadium, there's a swimming pool, there's a several big venues uh, uh, in, in this area. And uh, <clears throat> but you, you, know, you know, in many um, sports centers, they build a big structure, uh, big buildings. But here I try to bury all the buildings into the landscape. So you only see grass, the green surface, and the lake. Uh, all the buildings look like a volcanoes, like uh, mountains, but the, in a very um, weird way. Um, it doesn't look, it's obviously it's an, it's an artificial structure, um, but you can experience them as a uh, land art. So basically we, we turn this uh, urban plaza with many mega buildings into a very natural um, urban space. You can climb the mountains. You can you can walk around it. You can climb to the top and uh, look the the view around. That's a hotel, also um, on the on the edge of the park. So from there you can you can look down to to see the whole park. So the stadium also all the seats are actually. Uh, hidden uh, behind the, the, the green slope. All the functions are, are, are hidden inside, but they all have a natural light, they have a natural ventilation, um, but, but the facade become um, um, a natural space that um, part of the park that everyone can enjoy. <clears throat> as a model. <clears throat> this is another project. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a kindergarten, uh, another kindergarten in Beijing, China. Um, now it's under construction. Uh, as you can see, this is a this very colorful uh, roof. Uh, in, in the middle, it's a traditional uh, house. It's a traditional courtyard house, uh, which we have to, it's a listed building, we have to um, um, uh, preserve. So we decide to, to build this uh, uh, single floor roof around this old building. There were several buildings, those are red uh, blocks. There were, there were um, several uh, temporary buildings on the site. And there's a tower also at the, at the corner of the site. And there's a, there are several different types uh, within the site. So we, I, thought, I thought we cannot build a new building as a one object, because there's a no space. If we build a, a tower there, um, there 
would be no space for, for people, so for kids to, to, to, uh, to play. So we decided to build a new building as a, as a connection, uh, as a, you know, um, in between um, space. Uh, it, so, we, we, so we take the whole site, uh, we, we, we kept the old, we kept the, the tower, and every, every, all the space left become the new building. And uh, of course, in the new building, we, we, we also create the, the courtyard, um, outdoor space. Um, but that's a single floor. So we can have the roof. This roof uh, wouldn't be visible. Uh, it's a lower than, um, because it's a single floor, it will be lower than the, uh, the courtyard house. And, and kids can go up there to play on the roof. The roof become a new uh, playground. So that, that's the concept. And from this roof, uh, it's obviously a new space because this, this typology uh, wasn't part of the courtyard typology because the courtyard is more about privacy. It's, a, it's a not about uh, sharing. But here, you want people um, to share, to, to connect to each other. Uh, but from this space, you can see the old building. You can see the roof. You can see the, the trees around it. And you can, we also create this a new, uh, new courtyard space, which is quite different look from traditional courtyard. But it has the same um, feelings. Uh, this round courtyard inside, you have uh, the staircase. Kids can, can go up to the roof, and there's a trees. So, so this, this is a roof, uh, but uh, for me, it's a new earth. Because the earth normally under, under our feet, underneath our feet. But, but here, this, this, this is a floating, it's a, above us. But uh, when you go up there, the sky is a, is, a, is a new is a you're still under the sky, so people can can can, can run can can walk uh, on this new surface. So this for me is a new uh, definition for Earth. But actually, when we were young, we often play on the roof, the traditional slope roof. For for for us, those are also part of the Earth. This is another project. I want to talk about this traditional neighborhood. Uh, courtyard house, traditional part of the city. Um, outside the wall, it looks very shiny, but inside, that's a, actually a, um, a public toilet. They, they, the courtyard house, they don't have a private toilet. So that was a, uh, also a public toilet behind. In front of it, you see cars and the so-called public space. So this proposal also um, um, part of the Beijing 2050. So I, I, I, was, I was imagining the future of the city. Uh, um, I can do some bubbles. This, uh, this, uh, in this image, you see there's a silver reflective um, object. Uh, as a toilet. So I was imagining I can, I can build this a small toilet and plug into the, um, to the courtyard neighborhood. So they're small and we can put them anywhere as a new function. And uh, yeah. that's the, the the image of the, the project. We built one after the proposal. We call this the Beijing 2050, but uh, it happened er earlier than I expected. It's a toilet. Um, I call it the black hole here. Right? It's, a, it's not a black, but it's a, it also you don't see a hole. Uh, but the black hole for me um, means some kind of a space um, um, sp spatial atmosphere can drag people into something 
um, um, far from reality. Um, what's reality in this situation was the traditional buildings. Right? So you have a, you either copy from traditional buildings or you can build something so-called modern. But modern actually has uh, also some cultural reference. You, modern means you, you, you put something from other place uh, mix with the tradition. Black hole means, uh, means like this. It looks so strange, it doesn't belong anywhere. It doesn't seem part of the tradition. It also has a no cultural reference from other place. Um, so it looks so alien. And, uh, but, but, but I think there is a reason for this uh, object and, uh, and, and the material as well. So I try to create this bubble uh, that reflecting the surrounding. So the reflection can help the object disappearing into the context. At the same time, the reflection is not a mirror. It doesn't repeat the re reality, right? It's a, the, it creates this reflection image um, very uh, uh, different, a new image. You see the reflection kind of a twisted, but you can feel the sky, the tree, the old building uh, were all there. But at the same time, the, it, it kind of a disappearing. So that was my goal. Why I didn't repeat the old? Because I read, I read a, a novel, well, actually a, a saying from, from this famous writer uh, talking about the courtyard house. He says the beauty of a courtyard house was the, the, the emptiness, the space in the middle. It's not about the, the appearance of the, of the buildings. Um, so in, inside this emptiness, you have a trees, you have a people, you have a life, family, and the love. And he says that's a key for this architecture. So architecture is not about material, it's not about you know, the, the shape, but it's about the space. Um, so so I, I thought maybe if that's a key, I, I will keep the space, I will keep the tree, um, but, I will, but I will have a freedom to introduce some new member, um, new uh, element in this relationship. To, to, to have this a new a family. So that was my thought. I think uh, by putting, you see this image, that the, the, the bubble was on the, on the left side. It almost, almost disappeared it's itself. Um, so it's, it shows the respect, uh, uh, uh, respect uh, to this courtyard. But at the same time, uh, it can have uh, its own its own look, its own character. But from outside, uh, you can see the difference. It's, a, it's, it's obviously from a new time. It's from, not from the tradition. There's <clears throat> another um, project um, we're building in northern China. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, in front of the mountain. We're building this uh, conference hall. Uh, it's, a, it's a it's a building um, reference the, the the mountain landscape. It kind of a um, um, trying to blend into the horizon. It's a it's kind of very low. The roof horizontally uh, become part of the the land. It looked like a small hill, but it's floating. So you can see the mountain around it. The building is artificial hill, um, but it's a building. And this building looks so, people call it futuristic. For me, I think uh, futuristic means um, unfamiliar, or you, f you feel um, uh, it's uh, hard to find uh, 
in another place. Um, so when we combine these two together, it's a, the black hole. The black hole means you can drag a space in between the reality and the nature. The nature is a, it's always been there forever. Uh, you, have a, you have a different understanding about nature. But when you create something, you don't repeat the nature. You it, repeat, uh, you create an artificial thing. And this, this new thing is, um, the new architecture is, is, a, is a very uh, unfamiliar for people. Then there, there's a space in between um, for people to imagine things. So for example, for example this space is, is a reference the canyon space. It's like a canyon space in between two mountains and the natural light coming down. Um, but it's, as, as, uh, it's built by wood uh, and it's uh, artificial. It feels very warm. Um, so you will wonder is this an uh, uh, architecture space or is it a natural space? And we also built uh, this uh, um, building, we finished this building two years ago. It's an op opera house um, in Harbin, uh, also a very cold um, place uh, in the northern China. Uh, there are actually two buildings, and also the, the, the river, uh, the wetland landscape around the building, we designed everything together. And so we decided to make this building um, stand out it looked like a, a sculpture, right? It's stand out, but, but at the same time, it's a part of the landscape. So it's a new artificial landscape, basically. It, it, the building has a two part. One is a big opera house, another one is um, um, a theater. And these two parts are connected and also create this a plaza um, in the middle. It looked like a hills, like a, like a snow mountains. Um, the plan of the building kind of uh, trees the landscape uh, around it. You, you see the rivers around the building, they're all like ghost curves, uh, very organic shapes. So we, we make building part of it. And uh, we, we, we try to make the facade of the building um, continuing into the ground. Well, actually, you can walk um, along this facade onto the building and always walk to the top of the building. So this become a path, uh, literally like uh, you climb a mountain. So you can walk uh, outside the building uh, as, a, as an experience. Because opera house, normally they, they close during the, during the day. They open in the night. So. So during the day, people can also enjoy the building by climbing them. <clears throat> Those are gaps that are actually ramp. So people can go up and they can walk around the building and they can look at the view around the building. And once they reach the top, there's a space like a, this amphitheater space, um, like a circle um, um, to frame the sky. So, so the building is, um, <clears throat> is about the land. It's a, it's a blend into the, the, the, the land. But once, once people reach the top, they will see the sky. So those two things are very important to me. I think this kind of space can extend your architecture into a bigger landscape. Even some la landscapers, they're invisible. For example, the sky. Uh, you cannot literally reach them. But, there, but, but by doing this, you can, you can frame, frame the sky. Um, and, and the building on one side is very solid. The other side is uh, very transparent. We have a, a glass roof. Um, so, so, so inside, we can, uh, we can have a light and glow uh, during the night. And on the ground level, it's also very transparent. 
Um, there's a wood uh, auditorium in the middle. Um, during the day, it's um, <clears throat> a lot of a natural light coming in from the top, from the side. And because it's very transparent, I want to create this in interior space feels like outside. So, so you will see the, the, the landscape around the building. Um, you will feel um, you're still in, inside the beautiful nature. Um, on the two side, you see the stairs. So people go to different level by walk. And when people walk on the stairs, I want to create this experience that you feel you're already part of, part of the performance and people can look at each other. It's very formal uh, space. Um, so to, to, for people to prepare, they're entering um, uh, a theater. Inside the theater, I uh, also use a lot of wood. Also, I want to bring in the, the natural light. Um, so the wood, the organic space, make it feels like um, uh, instrument. It's like inside some kind of instrument. It's about the sound. It's about um, um, the space. That's when when when uh, musicians they were doing rehearsals. You can see the natural light coming down. That's during the sh the show. So everything were organic. Of course, they designed uh, for acoustics. But also, it's a sculptural shape, um, give a very natural feeling to the space. That's a one. Uh, that's a lobby for the small theater. Um, the material almost disappear. I use uh, several different materials, but they become all white. Um, I place the light and shadows, um, which is very important to me. I think the light shows the time, shows the, can create different uh, atmosphere. And uh, I try to hide the material um, to make the, the space dematerialized. So you can clearly say the, the artificial light and uh, the natural light. Fake pills. You, you can tell that's a fake hill. So that's a very easy to understand. So you build a building uh, as a hill. Uh, in this case, we build uh, uh, some towers in the mountain range. The mountain uh, in front of a lake. And we have to build many development around here. So I decide to, to build uh, several buildings and each one um, they're like growing out of the mountain. Um, like um, part of the natural mountain, part of the, the artificial mountain. That's, that was uh, the map, the, the contour lines of the site. So it, each building a different shape, different uh, size, different height, because each one have to um, grow out of this very special place. So we took the contour lines and used them as a part of the uh, building floor. So that's when, when the building finished. You can see there are several small buildings, bigger buildings, different height, different uh, location. They're all artificial, they're all concrete buildings. You can tell those are buildings. Uh, but from far away, the you know the the definition between nature and artificial was blurred, and uh, the reason being that was uh, I, I think build an urban tower here wasn't so good. Shouldn't we shouldn't bring a, a box here uh, to put a, a big object here? Um, Actually, it's all, 
it's almost uh, a criminal to do anything here. Right? It's a beautiful nature. But, but if you have to do something, um, I want to try that. I want to try, you know, what if the condition for us, for architects, is to provide this much space for people uh, in this beautiful landscape? How to solve it? So, so that was my answer. I think uh, probably to, to make your big structure as a nature, as a landscape, could be the solution. So this is a section. We build a part of the building on, on the side of the hill and part of it on top of it. So it's, a, it's a become a new um, community. It's, a, it's a one group of buildings. They're all facing the lake. Um, and they are, at the same time, they, they, they um, kind of uh, uh, rooted into the mountains. Each building has a big uh, terrace, uh, outdoor space. I try to make every floor different as well, so the building doesn't show a very, very uh, clear shape. Uh, kind of um, each floor feels can floating, can um, can move in the wind. Feels like so. So the overall building doesn't doesn't have a very strong appearance. That's that's one uh, balconies. So a lot of balconies, a lot of uh, outdoor space. I think from here you can you can see the beautiful view. Um, maybe um, some artificial thing is not so bad. Maybe you, I mean, if we can find a way to have a proper dialogue with the nature, it could be um, a good thing. This is another. A building look like a mountain, right? This is a, this is actually a model uh, we made for a tall building in Beijing, and that's uh, when the building finished. I built uh, two black towers out of glass. Um, they look like a uh, slide slice of rocks uh, coming out of the the ground. That's the image when you look at the building from distance. Um, there is a huge park in front of the site. So that's why I think um, I should build this tall building not as a boundary of the park, but as a part of the park, as a maybe second nature. Um, so I decide maybe the tall building can, can be uh, the fake hill. Maybe, maybe it's a, people can tell there's a tall building, but uh, what if it looked like a hill? So from the park, when you look at the building, you feel that's not a boundary of the, of the park, but it's uh, part of the landscape. In this, I think this photo is very interesting. You, you see this building very different from the surrounding. And uh, that's a modern city I was talking about. Modern city making so many uh, boxes like that. Uh, this is a very interesting painting uh, um, drawn by uh, uh, a Chinese uh, architecture critic. He, he made this painting and put our building in, inside the painting. The black tower is there. And uh, it looks so fit. Um, the building can fit into this uh, traditional landscaping context. And this landscaping we call Shan Shui, Shan Shui painting. That's a very key, that's very important in Chinese culture, also the urban uh, and architecture typologies in the past. Um, you can find it, I mean, if you look at this image, you see nature and this building. The building looks like a part of the nature. Um, because the nature always been there. And this you see the neighbor buildings. The neighbor buildings look like a white wall. I don't like those buildings. Uh, there, there's, that's, a, that's a something I reference from the Central Park, New York. 
they build the they, they build the building as a, as a wall of the park to so they treat the nature as a resource right? who can have a view who which building is taller um, but no building wants to think themselves as a part of the park so we build this to um, uh, towers, at the same time, several small buildings at the back, on the other side. So in between these small buildings, there are gardens and the public space. That's a construction photo, because all, the fo all this glass was, uh, was very, very special glass. We use all the curve to make this organic shape. And uh, you, you see this vertical fins they're, they're actually, um, you can see from here, is an is a air tunnel, is a, um, like a chimney. Uh, the cool air will, will go into this tunnel from the bottom and release on the top to bring the, uh, the air uh, through the building. And on every floor, uh, they can open windows uh, to get the fresh air from this tunnel. That's the lobby. At the bottom, we have water in front of the building and, and, the, and the trees. So that's when you look out from this, uh, the lobby of the tower, you see the smaller buildings at the back. Uh, it's very, the scale is, is lower, is uh, more um, intimate. I call this a valley space. So all the smaller buildings feels like a rocks or small villages. <clears throat> There's another mountain, uh, Hollywood, in Beverly Hills, Los Angeles. We're building one mixed-use building here. Uh, they build uh, this small house. I think they're, they look very cute on, on the hill. Uh, but we build uh, something like this. We build a, uh, it's a five floor, but we build a, a, a hill first and then build a village on top of it. So on top, you see two floor buildings. And then uh, the middle part is a, is a living wall um, facade, a lot of a green and, and the sloping um, profile. So the building feels like a kind of a um, hill in the, in the city. Um, so it's a five floor building, but it feels like a smaller scale than five floor. So we try to create this uh, um, in between nature and, uh, and uh, um, big structure. On top of it, we also have a trees, and the ground level is, floated, is floating. Uh, the plan is actually a courtyard. We create this courtyard space in, in the middle, and uh, every, every family will, will share their, their public like, living space, dining space, uh, around the courtyard. That's uh, image under construction. So it, it's like a little cute village on top of an a, a artificial hill we're building in Beverly Hills. <laughs> and in the future here, uh, we'll create a waterfall. Uh, again, we frame the sky in the courtyard, and you enter underneath the, the, the garden, and you will look up. The, the, the light will coming down, also um, the water and, and, and the sound of the water. <clears throat> so now I talk about the trees. Uh, but this tree uh, is not a real tree. It's uh, the structure of the tree. And this is a building. Uh, office building we built in China. Uh, you, you see the, the plan of the building looks like a flower. It's uh, branching out. In the middle is a, the central atrium. And uh, every part is, is a, actually office space. And they're all connected in the center. And they al also shared many garden spaces uh, around. So that's the diagram of this building. The ground level al almost uh, lifted. It's a floating building. 
and uh, only six mega um, columns uh, to support the building. And those void there for gardens. And outside this structure, we will put the shading device because it's in the southern China, it's very, very strong suns. The ground level is all lifted. We put the water, we put a uh, very uh, uh, natural space uh, on the ground level to provide uh, open space for the city. And you enter this uh, lobby, uh, when the glass are open, the, the fresh air can go in and go, go up through the central space. On many levels, you will have a gardens around. Uh, they're triple height or double height. They're, in, they're, they're uh, behind the, the shading devices. So the building like branching out. Those are construction photos. Every part feels like a canopy because the building is a cantilever. It's a canopy creating shading, creating the, the negative space, the, the void space for people to enjoy outdoor activities. So the building is not only an envelope to define what's inside, what's outside, but in this case, to, to, to create many in-between spaces for people to enjoy the some uh, semi-indoor, semi-outdoor space. The sky. Um, one image I showed in my student work, the early work, I, I, I showed you this a tall building floating above the sky. And this one uh, is it, actually um, has some link to that uh, early work. But this one is a recent project we're building right now. It's a museum uh, in Los Angeles called the Lucas Museum of uh, Narrative Arts. Um, it's actually um, um, a museum for George Lucas, uh, the creator for Star Wars movies. Um, so the movie was about the science fiction. And here, I think, in, in our world, in our city, the city is very much about um, uh, facts, uh, uh, the reality. So we, we, I think in this case, the museum can be a fantasy. The museum can, can, can create this time gap or black hole you know, in between the fantasy and the reality. So here I think maybe the building can be a cloud uh, that's floating above the site. And uh, I like this image very much. We create this uh, image uh, to, to show the surrounding. So you see the, the mountain that really, really far away from our site, actually, and uh, Los Angeles downtown. You see these tall buildings. Uh, actually, you see them everywhere right now. Uh, now. But some, somehow I imagine like 100 years ago, you don't have the, those things. Uh, but the mountains were, were there. The mountains are so powerful, and the city was horizontal. So how we create something very uh, futuristic, but at the same time talk to the landscape. So, so here, I think the horizontal structure was my, was my answer. Uh, it's, a, it's a very long uh, building uh, with, a, with a gallery space inside it. Inside is a single floor. Uh, structure and floating above the site. On the ground level, we can, we can create a lot of a public park and the green space under the shade. Um, the middle um, space underneath the building is a, is a plaza, is an urban plaza, uh, where also you can enter the museum from, from this plaza. So this elevation, the building, once you lift it, 
you can you can free up a lot of space on the ground at the same time create another space urban or natural space on top of the building so you can see this building um, along the street also feels elevated this is actually a water it's a cooling tower for a um, mechanical uh, equipment the waterfall uh, but it's it also become a landscaping element. So the building is a cantilever uh, on top of the, the landscape. And then we create the, also the nature um, park on top of the building. That's a plaza underneath. It's a very, a very big arch. Uh, this space for me um, uh, is quite um, classic, I think. It's a, it has a hole on the top to, to, to, to bring down the natural light. And, uh, and there's a two glass lobby on two sides and they kind of uh, uh, have this uh, dialogue to each other and you're in the middle. It's a very um, central, uh, symmetrical space. It's very classic for me. Um, but at the same time, it's so abstract um, and futuristic. So now we go back to New York because my, my pre presentation start from criticizing the modern architecture in New York. Um, several years ago, we got this opportunity to, to do a high rise there. So that was um, my challenge, how to make a high rise in New York. You see that uh, small tower, black color? That was my design. It's, a, it's, it's, a like, it's called a pencil tower. It's a very tiny footprint um, next to Empire State Building. Empire State Building it was, a, you know, was a landmark and looked very powerful, um, but our building looked very weak, <laughs> very gentle. Um, um, so barely touch the, the, the, the ground and the top become transparent and merge into the sky. So I find a lot of buildings in New York, they look very powerful because uh, the, the, the skyline, either very sharp um, or very um, massive. So, I thought maybe I can make a building look very soft at the same time uh, disappearing into the sky. Maybe in that way you can reach the sky, in fact, because you're connected to the sky um, instead of uh, aiming the height, the physical height. So in this case, the dialogue between our building and the sky become more important. So the building uh, has a smaller footprint at the bottom, and the middle part has a little bit um, um, uh, cantilever, and then goes back to, to smaller footprint on the top, and then um, the, the, the glass material uh, will turn from the black into uh, transparent. So you, you will uh, not be able to tell where is the, the building end? Uh, that was my goal. I think uh, um, this building, I mean, now when we talk about um, how a tall building become human and uh, na na uh, natural, we talk about the sustainability. But in fact, in this image, many high-rise buildings around, uh, around this uh, um, building, their uh, lead building, their, their green building, their sustainable building. But they look uh, no different from the, the building in the past. Um, they're still like a machine, right? The space, the quality of architecture. So I was wondering um, if this whole thing is about, uh, the discussion is about our relationship to the nature, then 
the energy, of course, is one thing. It's a sustainability technology. There are part of the discussion. But what's the proof that our new architecture is really respect the nature and uh, re really respect uh, to show our um, emotional connection to the nature? Um, I find that in the, the old image, the, the traditional cities, traditional gardens, old architecture, you find you know, people turn this understanding about nature in um, a very, very emotional way in the architecture. But what's the solution in today's uh, city, in the future architecture? Um, so that's w that was my intention, not showing trees. And I don't talk about the technology and uh, uh, sustainable strategies. Of course, this building can be environmental, um, sustainable building. But I want to focus here is uh, how this tall building can really create dialogue in between the city and uh, the nature around us. So that was uh, <clears throat> my, um, my proposal. And uh, once we have this building in the context, you can see each building has their appearance in, in this context for a reason. Uh, you, you see the values behind them. Uh, so if we say in the future we try to create a city uh, for human and nature, and uh, uh, when we talk about the nature, it can be um, a good environment in the big cities, in the high rise. Um, so I think we need uh, new solutions and uh, we need to do many uh, experiments uh, on this topic. I think that's my last, thank you very much.